Hello, I'm Dr. Marla Shapiro, and I sit on the board of trustees of the International Menopause Society. And today I'm joined by Dr. Nicole Jaff. Nicole, can you introduce yourself to our women who are watching this? Thank you so much, Dr. Shapiro. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm Dr. Nicole Jaff, and I'm an honorary lecturer in the Department of Chemical Pathology at the University of the Dubartisrand and a member of the Professional Board of Psychology in South Africa. I'm a council member of the South African Menopause Society and a member of the International Menopause Society. Well, I'm really excited to interview you today for our women who are listening to us because you've co-authored a white paper along with Dr. Pauline Mackey on something that is very near and dear to a lot of midlife women, and that is brain fog in menopause. So firstly, it's a term that we use a lot. I know I've used it, but let's try and define, since it's, it seems to be such a broad name, brain fog, what do most women mean when they feel that? I think it's that foggy feeling and there are a group of symptoms that happen around the time of menopause. This includes difficulty remembering words and numbers, disruptions in daily life, when you misplace items like keys, trouble concentrating, losing your train of thought, forgetting the reason for doing something like why you came into a room, forgetting appointments and events. And it can be very concerning because it does interfere with quality of life because one's worried about why this is happening and is something very bad happening to my brain or is it just normal? Yeah, I know that when women come to see me, some of the most common complaints is word retrieval, not remembering somebody's name or exactly, I came into a room and why am I here and why am I not remembering why? So of course, many women worry that this is a symptom that means that they are on their way towards dementia, which is something that I think many women fear. So is there an inevitable association between the brain fog and menopause? And yes, I'm on my way towards something more catastrophic. Absolutely not. These symptoms are usually quite mild and they resolve post-menopause. Often it's good to remember that all women go through menopause, but not all women get dementia. It's just a very small number. So it's something to be reassured about. And also, there's been a lot of chatter on social media, which makes women afraid. And there's no need to be afraid because there are things one can do to protect this. And so when we, when we talk about what we can do, um, women will say, well, I'm, I'm a woman. I can't do anything about that. I'm midlife, uh, midlife and menopausal. can't do anything about that. But is there anything that I can do that I can be proactive about or modify that is a risk factor? Absolutely. As you said, there's certain risk factors we can't modify, our female sex, our family history, um, our age. But the modifiable risk factors are many. They're the Lancet Commission on Prevention of Alzheimer's Disease and Late Life Dementia and the World Health Organization listed up to 12 factors that you can modify to postpone any dementia and to protect your brain and even to prevent dementia. And these are many. They're looking after your heart health, um, watching your blood pressure, not letting it get too high, watching your weight, keeping it at a healthy weight between 18 and 25, a blood pressure of below 130, um, watch that you're not eating sugary, starchy foods so that you're not getting at risk for diabetes, exercising, it's very important to break a sweat, and of course, challenging your brain. So exercising your brain, learning a brand new skill, and something that really challenges you, maybe a new language, maybe uh, joining a choir, learning to read music, something like that. We often talk about this notion of being socially connected, um, being with people. Is being social also important for the brain? Absolutely vital, and I'm so glad you brought that up. It's a brilliant question. We know that being socially engaged and socially connected is absolutely vital for brain health, especially if you've had a previous history of depression or you have depression. You need to stay socially connected. You need to spend quality time with family and friends, maybe volunteer, get involved with your local community. And as you say, this issue is very important, especially given these past few years of COVID when many women felt incredibly isolated. And that's really not good for brain health. So when we often look at our style of eating, when I use the word diet, I don't mean it to be a punitive, oh, I'm on a diet, I want to lose a few pounds. I mean it as a diet and a lifestyle. Is there a particular diet that we can recommend to women that 
that is something that they can maintain long term, not as oh, I'm going to do this for four weeks and then go back to my previous habits. That's been shown to help our brain health. Yes, in fact, the Mediterranean diet has recently been shown to be the diet that really does help with brain health. What's so great about it is that it doesn't matter what culture you're from, what sort of food you like to prepare. It's able to be used in any sort of culture. It's very easy to follow. It's a real way of lifestyle rather than, as you say, a four-week diet of cutting everything out. It's nuts, it's fruits, it's whole grains good fats like olive oils, avocados, and it really is an excellent diet for heart health and brain health. And as I said, heart health, a healthy heart goes hand in hand with a healthy brain. So recently there has been a change in the guidelines about what we consider safe alcohol. And the number has gotten so low. We used to tell women that having a glass of wine or a unit of alcohol once a day was fine. But now the recent guidelines are telling us that more than three units a week is actually putting your heart at risk, risk for cancer. So any guidance as far as alcohol and brain health is concerned for women, because that seems to have been such a big recent change. Well, it is a recent change and you're quite right. But what's interesting in both the Lancet Commission guidelines and the World Health Organization guidelines, both of them say moderate alcohol use, so definitely not more than three glasses a week. And, uh, and a glass, a little bit, not a huge <laughs> tumbler of wine or anything. And of course, we have to add in here, no tobacco, no smoking and avoid any kind of air pollution, because that's also another thing that's not great for your brain health. So for many of my women at Midlife who come to see me who feel that they're battling weight gain and that it's difficult and often feel overwhelmed by this, is it ever too late to change our habits and make some modest changes that could have a positive outcome? Never, never too late. And I just read yesterday a new research article that says even light physical exercise protects your brain. Eating well, changing your eating habits now, cutting out starchy, fatty, sugary foods, which and replacing them with some lovely fruit, nutritious vegetables are all excellent for brain health. And it's never, ever too late to change. Well, thank you for this really positive message. And I think in many ways, reassuring for women that that brain fog they do experience is not necessarily a progression to something more severe and perhaps a wake up call, if you will, to now is a good time for me to make some healthy changes. Uh, one last question, COVID and brain fog and menopause, is there a link between all of this? Yes, unfortunately, what we are finding is that brain fog is one of the symptoms that occurs in nearly between 20 to 30 percent of people, especially those who've had long COVID. And the problem about that is, is you can often mix up the symptoms of brain fog and menopause and the symptoms of long COVID. So it's very important when talking to your healthcare practitioner to let them know if you've had long COVID so that they don't mix up a diagnosis and diagnose your brain fog as a menopause symptom rather than a long COVID symptom. Eventually it will resolve though. Thank you so much for being with us and really giving us some marching papers, if you will, about our diet and exercise. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me.